Hello and welcome back to the Wrexham Way. Hope you're all doing well and looking forward to today's episode as we take on Leeds United and Cardiff in the Premier League. The Cardiff game is the Battle of Wales, which will be a lot of fun. So hopefully we get some nice results today, but things have not been great in between episodes. And I'll be honest, I think we are running into a few little issues and problems in the team, which I will go through and explain in a few moments time. But first of all, make sure you do drop a like on the video for me, subscribe if you're new around here and leave a comment down below to the YouTube algorithm. So let's start off with results since you guys were last here. And you were last here for the 2-0 loss to Liverpool and the 1-1 draw to Bournemouth. And since then, in the five games we've played, well, we haven't done particularly well. Particularly playing against teams lower down the table than us. Uh, it was not been great. We started off in the FA Cup fourth round and as expected, we did lose it to Chelsea 1-0. A lot closer than maybe you would have expected, but they did actually have a rotated team around and Lucas Holter once again got himself sent off, which was fantastic. The only win from in between episodes was an home win against Manchester City, scoring a goal in the 96th minute of about four minutes at a time. So we got so lucky in that game because Man City also had like 25 shots to our, you know, five or six or something like that. So, so, so lucky to win that game. But following that, a 1-0 loss to Leicester was not ideal. A 2-2 draw with Burnley was really not very good with us, uh, particularly had to fight back for that one as well. And then a 2-1 loss to Southampton is the icing on the cake. It was not a great game, that one. Uh, we did deserve the win. Look at the match stats. We deserve the win. Uh, 16 shots there, 11. Mm, you know, maybe not quite as clear-cut as maybe I remembered it being, but... It was frustrating not to get the three points. And so we are slowly sliding down the table. We've only dropped down to 12th place, to be fair, which is much better than where we should be. Uh, Chelsea, actually, down below is in 13th. That's the real surprise, I think, this season. Chelsea not doing particularly well, but do have a pretty decent team. You can see Lukaku up there with their 18 goals. Uh, Mason Mount with a great average rating. So not quite sure why they are so low down the table. But... Those aspirations that we had for potentially getting into European football, well, they are completely done, founded now. We are, what, 13 points behind Newcastle in 6th place, um, 12 points behind Brighton in 7th, uh, which obviously isn't ideal for us. But we are way ahead of the relegation zone, 21 points clear of the relegation zone as things stand right now. So we're not going down, we're not going to get European football, we're just going to try and finish in the mid-table. Hopefully top half, that's our, our aim, we can still do it, but things need to turn around. Now, I mentioned there were problems in between episodes, and uh, yeah, there's a couple. Uh, well, first of all, we'll talk about Vinicius Tobias. You can see here on the promises that uh, we failed to increase his playing time, which is frustrating because we did increase his playing time. Uh, when he came to us and said, you failed to do this, he'd played 13 of the last 20 games, which is, I think, a reasonable amount of playing time, if I'm honest with you. Uh, so we've promised him that he's going to have more playing time. He's got a month left on that. However, he has been injured since he asked me. Um, so I think he's going to get across to me again. If we look at his injury history, uh, you can see he's been out for four weeks after that game against Man City. So I don't know. He might get cross again, probably will. We'll find out, won't we? Also, a really big issue with Federico Sione. Now, he's got 16 goals to his name this season, which is fantastic. And to reward him for that, we signed him up to a new big contract, making him the highest earner at the club and getting rid of those release fee clauses. He signed that on uh, Boxing Day, which was fantastic. But since Boxing Day, he has not scored. He scored one goal. One goal he scored. He signed his contract, um, yeah, literally before the Hall City game. Since then, one goal, one assist. That's all he's got. So I think he needs to be dropped for a while because I've spoken to him several times about his form and it's not improving. Also, as we look at the table in depth, you can see that in terms of uh, goals against, we are, you know, not great. I mean, luckily Wolves, Burnley and Bournemouth are terrible, but we're not much better than those guys in terms of defensive records. So we need to do something about our defensive record and stop conceding quite so many goals. And apparently we also have a pretty rubbish club atmosphere right now as well, which is probably also issuing and contributing towards that poor run of form we've been in recently. Seven players currently unhappy at the team. Um, I mean, these guys may be crossing me right now. Um, you know what? I think Crestwell will probably leave, to be fair. Gaston and Ryuchi will probably leave at the end of the season. Galbraith will probably leave as well. We might even get rid of Tobias after he just keeps whining about everything and stuff like that. But if these players want to leave, Camboala's the one I want to keep. He wants a new contract. And am I prepared to give him a new contract? I'm not 100% sure right now. 
So basically, things aren't quite going to plan. We had a great first half of the season, but things are becoming a bit of an issue in the second half of a season. Hopefully today, we can turn things around. But this is the team that I think is going to do the business today. We've got Schneller in goal with a back plan of Suntesic, Sequeira, Luis Felipe and Vinicius Tobias. Ostergaard, Patrick and Sandri start in the centre of the midfield. Bell, who's got the highest average rating across all our players this season thus far on the left-hand side of the pitch, is paired up with Rebergen, who's actually had a pretty decent season. He's a bit of a bright spark, really. Not quite scored as many goals though so far this season from last season, but I think he should be able to reach at least 10 goals and 10 assists, which would be amazing. Ah, another problem is that if we go to transfer, make an offer and try to learn him for next season already, United want to give him a chance in their first team. So this could be the last chance we have with Rebergen. But we'll get to the issue when we come there. As I said, Sione not in great form, so we're going to start Gabriel Salom today as our striker to see if he can just, I don't know, spur on Salom to score more goals if he's not starting games. Luckily, we have done enough this season to avoid the drop. I cannot see us dropping 21 points to uh, get the relegation zone I just can't see that happening so we are safe from relegation so it's not like this is going to be too much of a big deal for us right now but both Leeds and Cardiff are below us in the table so today if we want to show that we are a mid-table team potentially top half and maybe look to with the right additions push towards European football next season which is a big big ask we need to be doing an awful lot better against teams like <sighs> Leeds how have we just not scored there Jan Patrick chip wide of the mark Look, we're going to get there. We're going to get there. It's going to be fine uh, and things will work out, I'm sure. I'm sure they will, but we just need a little bit more luck going our way, I think, in the next few games. The final few games of the season, eight to go, including this one, I believe. Um, no, eight to go after this one, isn't there? Which is fantastic. So still plenty of time to get some points on the board. What we should do, actually, is double check the points total from last season. I believe it was 44 we got last season. So as long as we beat 44 points, like for me, that's a win in my book. And I'm very happy with that one as Brenner tries a chip at the other end of the pitch and just puts it over the bar. A little bit more ambitious, that one, than Jan Patrick's, I believe. Uh, Chelsea are currently 3 up against Burnley. It's just flashing up behind my face right now as it is on the screen. So... Uh, I mean, Chelsea will go ahead of us in the table as things stand, which is not too bad. Chelsea are a decent team, just having a poor season for whatever reason. Uh, Bell on the ball, finds a great ball to Salom, and Salom, oh, you hate to see it. First time shot off the crossbar, so narrowly going in the back of the net, but that's probably better than we've seen from uh, Sione for a long time. So Salom, having a good impression in this first half, but we are currently nil-nil as things stand. We need to play better, step things up a little bit, and maybe even think about changing formation slightly like it worked last season to keep us up it worked in the first half of the season to get some good results but have we been found out that's something that maybe we should be looking at and maybe looking to tweak into next season just sort of reassess the quality of players that we have and what their greatest strengths are because I think <sighs> oh dear me how do these things keep happening? How? Oh, dear me. For all the good Schnell has done this season, I mean, that's that's really poor. Ugh. Look, things will be fine. Things will be fine. Jeez, uh, I can't believe this. Right, okay. Uh, let's go. Demands more. And let's work the ball into the box instead for a change, shall we? Let's try and do that. Let's... Focus play down the wings a little bit more. See if we can just work that out a little bit better, potentially. Let's just try something slightly different for the final 20 minutes of this game. Let's also, whilst we're here, maybe make some changes too. Uh, let's bring Sandri off for Debbie. Let's also, I mean, Salon's on a 6.3. You hate to see it. Rebergen on a 6.2. Let's bring him off for uh, Luciao and then confirm those changes. Let's see how we can do for the final 20 minutes or so as Leeds United look to come forward. Will the pain continue as Jack Harrison on the ball uh, gets it out wide, gets it back at his feet in the area and it's a good shot on goal, good block from our defenders there and we do manage to stop Leeds United getting a second goal here. To be honest, I don't think we've really deserved this one at all. You can see Leeds have dominated us in the match stats as well. XG is high for us because we had some two really good chances early on in the game but since those chances, absolutely nothing and we deserve this loss. We deserve it. Throw the water bottle, I'm not happy. And this is just how it's been in between episodes, really. So we dropped down to uh, 14th in the table behind both Chelsea and Leeds. So uh, slipping down a little bit further. Let's just double check the points total we got last season. 
The points total we had, I'm sure it's 44 we got last season, if I remember correctly. Uh, 38. Oh, lower than I thought it was, to be fair. So actually, we are, what are we on now? We're on. 38. So we've equaled the points total from last season, which is great. So really, actually, if we're going to be, you know, completely honest, just one more point this season, that would be enough for me to say that we have improved and we've done better. But given we've got eight games to go, if we only get one draw and seven losses in that time, are we really upset? Also doing a lot of scouting out of the Welsh teams and setups right now, um, and Byro apparently. He's gone back to uh, Gramino apparently, because he wasn't very good at Southampton. Um, so they let him go back to Brazil, where he's done very well. So clearly just flops in the Premier League, maybe. But as I was saying, uh, doing a lot of scouting right now of the... Uh, but as I say, doing a lot of scouting right now of the Welsh system because we actually don't have any Welsh players in our first team, which is a bit worrying. Ah, that is a lie, actually, because Ewan is Welsh, uh, but he's the only person who's Welsh in our first team right now. Uh, we've got no one in the first team of the Welsh setup. But if we go to the under-21 teams and sort it by club, we've got one, two in the under-21 setups, and we've got a few more out on loan, uh, particularly Colchester, actually. We've got four players out on loan at Colchester this season, and they are currently fourth in League One. We're rooting for Colchester at the moment. They might just miss out on automatic promotion, but hopefully in the playoffs they'll do pretty well. If we drop to the under-19s, for example, we've got more players at Wrexham than Swansea and Cup and stuff like that. Under-18s is a similar story, so we've got Players coming through, which is great, but they just need to develop quicker. Quicker, please. And speaking of players on loan, they are doing really well. If we look at the players on loan list and look at the uh, sorted by teams, for example, we can see four players at Colchester all doing pretty well, although it looks like they have dipped in form in recent weeks as they have had a bit of bad form. Because I think they were second for a while in League One and they've dropped down a little bit. But they're all doing pretty well, scoring goals, getting assists, keeping clean sheets. It's what you love to see. So actually, I wouldn't mind getting Colchester if they get promoted to the championship as an affiliate club. That'd be quite nice. But as the days tick on, it's the 14th of March. That's my birthday. So happy birthday to me in 2029. You love to see it. Uh, the Battle of Wales is not approaching us. Why is the Battle of Wales not approaching us? Um, what's happened with that? Well, look at the, the youth intakes coming through. It looks amazing, by the way. So we'll look at that in a second. Um, but the match has been rearranged due to Man City v Cardiff. In what? In what? Oh, the FA Cup court final. Okay. Well, that's annoying. So I guess we're not going to do the Battle of Wales today. Um, and given it's two weeks until the game against Tottenham, and I'm recording this on my lunch break right now on Friday, uh, I haven't really got much time to play through those two weeks. So we might have to cut this episode a little bit early today. But at least we have got the youth intake coming through right now, which is fantastic. We could at least finish an episode on a high right now. And actually, three players with five-star potential coming through looks pretty nice. We'll start off with Jonathan Weir, who is the top-rated prospect, a Mazala in the centre of midfield. And to be fair, 14 passing, 12 technique, uh, vision work rate's pretty high, de determination's pretty high. At 15 years old, he actually looks like he could make a solid player in five years' time or something like that. So you never know. This could be quite nice. We've also got Dylan Howarth as well. He is a centre-attacking midfielder. And again does look quite solid. He can play striker too, but his finishing is quite low, composure is quite low. So I'd see him as more of that playmaker potentially, particularly with, you know, decent passing and technique and vision and stuff like that. If it could all improve a little bit, that would be lovely. And then the final five-star player is a winger on my left-hand side, which of course it is because all our great players come through on my left-hand side of the wing. I don't know why they just seem to, but 14 dribbling is pretty decent. Uh, pace and acceleration are decent too. Obviously, a lot of work to do in other areas, but fundamentally, he actually does like a pretty decent winger on that left-hand side. So, that could be quite handy, to be fair. We'll have a look at this four-star centre mid as well, um, who's a playmaker. And you can see as well, actually, his mentals are not too bad, but his technicals and physicals are worse than the three guys that we looked at before. So, you can see why he's got limited potential compared to the others. But, you know what? I think we'll take that. That's pretty nice. But because we now don't have a game uh, for two weeks or so, and uh, I'm running out of time on my lunch break today, which is not ideal, um, we're going to have to call today's episode here, I am afraid. But next time out, we will be back for the final two games of the season against Brighton and Crystal Palace. So apologies for the slightly shorter episode today, but I think you'll understand why I've got to do that, because um, 
on a work day, I guess work has to come first, sadly, which is a bit of a shame. But thank you very much for watching. Hope you guys have enjoyed today's episode. If you have, make sure you do drop a like on the video for me. Subscribe if you're new around here and leave a comment down below for the YouTube algorithm. Until next time, have a good one. Goodbye.